It's been a few weeks since a large fire at the Tyson Processing Plant in Kansas, and Daryl, that's actually still impacting the markets. Oh yeah, we're still seeing markets. In fact, we're really just being able to assess the impacts now. Uh, slaughter data comes, the actual slaughter data comes with a couple week lag, so it was only in the last week or so that we got the data for the week after the fire. And, and if you look at those patterns, um, you know, for the Monday through Friday, immediately after the fire, the slaughter, uh, steer and heifer slaughter was down just about the, uh, the estimated capacity of, of that plant. I think it was down 4.6% for Monday through Friday. But by a week later, the industry was able to put together a large Saturday kill, which offset most of that. Price shocks have been pretty dramatic. Uh, has a lot of folks concerned a little bit, but really it's the market doing what the market does. So box beef prices shot up immediately. Uh, they've come back down pretty well and, and uh, it looks like many of those impacts are there. We're still working through the impacts on feeder and fed cattle markets. And of course USDA is actually gonna investigate to make sure there were no improprieties as a result of all of this. Cattle producers are, are thinking corn right now. They need feed for the winter. How are, how's, how's corn impacting feed prices? Well, there's a, you know, a lot of uncertainty, like a lot of other factors affecting cattle markets. Corn markets are uncertain right now. Uh, you know, we really don't have a good handle yet on acreage and even more questions about yield at this point. And so there's a lot of diversity out there. USDA's official estimates right now are for a significantly larger corn crop than I think most analysts would uh, agree with at this point. If USDA is right, and it could happen, then prices for corn won't change a whole lot this year from last year. On the other hand, we've got a lot of late corn out there. It's very immature. And if we get, uh, you know, even an, a regular frost or certainly an early frost, that's going to have a bigger impact on yield. So there's risk in this market to the upside. Uh, that would affect feedlot uh, cost of gain. So that would impact them. And if that happens, then it will have impacts on feeder cattle markets as well. So everybody's keeping an eye on this thing right now. It's still quite uncertain. Last fall and winter, we had really great wheat pasture across the state. We're a lot of producers are, are starting to put the wheat in the ground right now. Is, is there a potential for a good wheat pasture crop again this year? Actually looks very good right now. Uh, most of the state has had some rain over the last two weeks, uh, or certainly over the last month. There are a few spots that have kind of missed out, but by and large, uh, moisture conditions are good, soil temperature conditions are good. I've done a few uh, sort of tentative budgets, um, and, and you know, it looks like a sort of an average year, I guess I would say at this point. Part of the problem, of course, is that feeder cattle futures, if you use them as an estimate of where we're gonna be able to sell cattle next spring, those are still depressed. They're still actually uh, impacted by the fire impacts, and we've not recovered really from that in those futures markets. Uh, so it's kind of a break-even proposition at this point. I think it depends a little bit on whether it's your wheat or whether you're renting wheat from somebody else um, in, in terms of the way the cash flow works out. So, uh, so it's going to require a little bit of uh, penciling. It looks like a, a, a sort of a decent year, but not really an outstanding year at this point in time. Okay, thank you very much. Daryl Peel, Livestock Marketing Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.